Yes, you guys, you made it to this part. Maksudnya, korang dah hampir survive untuk for a few weeks already. Anyway, kita sampai the few, the last bit of planting. So, but last bit of planting ni, we, where we put everything together. So, kita nak tengok evolutionary relationship in kingdom planting. So, kenapa dia macam ni? Kenapa dia less advanced? Kenapa yang ni lebih advanced? Why? And so on. So, let's check them out. This one is pretty straightforward. Tapi, pernah keluar dalam assignment sebelum ni. So, what makes students silap adalah dia tak tulis dengan penuh. Contohnya macam, from gametophyte generation. Uh, from gametophyte generation that is dominant in bryophyte to sporophyte generation that is dominant in pterophyte, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Student buat macam ni je. Bryophyte is gametophyte generation dominant. Macam tu je dia tulis. Dia tulis separuh ni je. Let's say like this one sampai sini saja. Kak. This one. Ya Allah. This one sampai sini saja. Bryophyte. Lepas tu yang lain tu dia tak tulis. So dia tak dapat markah langsung. Right? So here you just have to tulis semua sekali lah ev evolutionary dia. Yang paling kuno adalah gametophyte generation dominant dekat bryophyte and then uh, bila dah sampai pterophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm, sporophyte is dominant. Satu. Yang kedua adalah pasal vascular tissue. So daripada dia tak ada vascular tissue dekat bryophytes, tu dia dah ada simple vascular tissue dekat pterophyte and complex vascular tissue dekat gymnosperm and angiosperm. Okay, so uh, waktu terrified ni dia simple lagi. Dia cuma ada tricate dengan dengan sieve tube saja. Tapi untuk yang gymnosperm dia dah start untuk lebih advanced sikit dengan angiosperm. Although yang complete betul-betul adalah angiosperm punya yang paling complete lah. Alright. And then daripada talus kepada true root, leaf and stem dekat terrified, gymnosperm and angiosperm and then daripada dia punya motile sperm, motile sperm ni kat dua which is bryophytes and pterophytes kepada non-motile sperm dekat gymnosperm and angiosperm. Okay. And then from one type of spore, homosporus ni dekat bryophytes, bila start pterophytes, dia dah start untuk dapat heterospores and untuk gymnosperm and angiosperm as well. Okay. Pterophytes however, dia boleh juga jadi homospores, right? So pterophytes, dia ada dua homospores and heterospore. But here, homosporus ni selalunya yang bryophytes lah, yang kurang advance. Then from li free living gametophyte in bryophyte and pterophyte to protected gametophyte in, spor in the sporophyte of gamete of the gymnosperm and angiosperm. Okay. And then from the absence of seed in bryophyte and pterophyte to the presence of naked seed dekat gymnosperm. Okay, ni kan specific presence of naked seed and then to protect the seed in angiosperm. From the absence of fruit in bryophytes, pterophytes juga tak ada fruit, gymnosperm juga tak ada fruit, to the, pres to the presence of fruit in angiosperm. Daripada non-photosynthetic sporophyte in bryophyte to photosynthetic sporophyte in pterophyte, gymnosperm and angiosperm, Atau you boleh cakap dari segi uh, photosynthetic gametophyte dekat bryophytes dan pterophyte, eh, pterophytes non-photosynthetic gametophyte in gymnosperm and angiosperm. Okay. From smaller size of sporophyte to in bryophyte to bigger size in sporophyte dekat pterophyte, gymnosperm and angiosperm. From embryo protected in gametangia, dekat ni both bryophyte and pterophyte, to protected in seed by seed coat in gametophyte, in gymnosperm and angiosperm. So, that's about it. And then, kita boleh check juga daripada sini, conclusion kita. Bryophyte, the simplest one. And then, they found dekat moist environment sebab dia kena ada support by AI. And then, the eukaryotic, of course, semua ni adalah eukaryotes. And then, uh, stay near water sebab dia perlukan air untuk dia punya circulatory system. Dia tak ada vascular system. Jadi, dia perlukan air tu memang kena setiasa ada dengan dia lah. And then, dia punya reproduction as well, kan? Okay. 
and then the non-vascular system and then also cell wall di daripada selulus untuk Dendrophyte pula dia ada xylem dengan phloem which is vascular dia tapi very simple which consists of tracheid dengan vessel dengan sieve saja and then uh, dia reproduce by spore eukaryotic as well dia boleh buat photosynthesis of course dia ada cell wall made of cellulose and then gymnosperm pula dia have xylem dengan phloem which is a bit complex compared to the dendrophyte tapi less complex compared to angiosperm and then eukaryotic of course they boleh buat photosynthesis of course and then they ada cell wall cellulose and then yang quite important dia ada seed and that seed is called as naked seed right and then untuk angiosperm pula dia paling advance and then dia ada xylem dengan phloem yang paling advance also dia adalah eukaryotic of course it can do the photosynthesis does not really need to be near the water sebab dia ada vascular system yang lebih elok and then um Seed dia protected, yes, in fruit and also dia punya ada seed coat tu. And then, uh, dia produce flower. So, bila dia produce flower, dia ada lagi baik pollinators, ada lagi banyak pollinators. Also, become more diverse. Okay, disperse. Okay, dia boleh didispersekan dengan lebih baik. So, that is all about this evolutionary relationship. Dia memang basically, you kena hafal je lah benda ni. Okay. But you can see kan, nampak kan, dia kalau gametophyte generation adalah dominant, maksudnya dia less advanced. Okay, dia more primitive. And then start daripada dia ada vascular system yang lebih baik, maka dia adalah more advanced. And then you boleh tengok daripada seed pula, kalau seed dia protected, maksudnya dia lagi advanced compared to unprotected seed. Okay. So that's all for this one. Thank you guys.